Hi babies, I am doing it. It's BB. You saw the title. We're doing the 21 tarot questions. I didn't know if I was gonna do this. It just feels like a behemoth, like I don't know. Um, this is a VR to, I believe, Lisa Pepez, because it's been a minute and like everyone's done it but me. So um, yes, okay, yes, I did it. They're all lined up. Let's go for it. I didn't cheat mostly. There were like, a, there's one that I answered with two and one that I answered with three, I believe. Everything else is one. Okay. First question. I'll also put the questions down below. First question. A deck that they'll have to pry out of your cold, dead hands. Okay, so... I picked the Tiger Tarot and Tenebrae just because I had to. It's just so unique and it just feels like so me. And I'm very into, I don't know, history and the arts and like bygone eras. And it just feels right. And I've always been a huge fan of photography as well as black and white photography. So this is the Whispers edition. That's why it has these descriptions at the bottom. If you do get this deck, I really recommend this version. I think I first saw it on Meg's channel, but the interpretations are so unique and like really poignant. Oh no. So that's why I decided to get this one too. Okay, so that's number one of two. And the Tiger Tarot. Does it say? Yeah, it says on the box. Um, it's by Lori Field, an artist. She did this during um, you know, the Panera. And I have a fully fledged video about this deck. So I will link it up in the cards. But this one is just really incredible. Really like addictive to look at. Oh, this is my favorite chariot in the whole world. I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh, this might be my favorite tower. I, it's just so fashionable, it's so fashion, you know? And like psychedelic and medieval and all the things and like feminist. Oh, so good, so good, so good. Yeah, so these are my, you have to pry them out of my cold dead hands. Okay, question number two, what's your guilty pleasure deck? Um, mine would be the Divine Codes Oracle and I have a video dedicated to that. I don't know if it's, I don't remember if it's just a video about this deck or if I included like my thoughts on it in like a different video, but I will link that regardless because there are cards that I really really adore more than anything and like it's so good at what it does and then there are cards that really baffle me and like somewhat not somewhat they really like put me off and I don't like think that they're right case in point this one's just weird I mean I won't go through it because like I already I already did that in another <laughs> in another video but if you want the tea then watch that video but um there are other cards of this deck that are just really incredible and appeal to my aesthetic. So that's my guilty pleasure. Okay, question number three is a deck you wish existed. I said two, three. Is a deck that you wish existed? I have two videos I've made about this um, where I show detailed photos um, from my Pinterest and things like that. So I will link those if I can 
in the cards. If I can't, they'll be in the description below. But I thought I'd show you an actual deck. So I wish that the Gothic Tarot existed as a full length deck. This is currently a majors only. It's by Layla Wendell. When, oh, sorry, it's not focused. Layla Wendell. I even like the kind of gothic crosses. Hi, kitty. Yeah, I just wish this was, hello? Hello? She just ate. Hello, what does it smell like? Does it smell good? Yeah, I wish that they had a minor arcana because it's just so gorgeous. I find all the cards really captivating. There's just not enough. And my deck, this, um, I bought this secondhand and it doesn't have a magician card, which is a bummer. But she did send me the, the image that I could download and like print, but I, I don't do stuff like that. I'm lazy and it's not gonna be the same. Oh, that's not, doesn't go with it. You know, like I just, I can't, but I love this. I love how like DIY it is and handmade. Like you can tell that this was pasted on, you can feel it. Oh, so cool, such cool imagery. Question number four, a deck that you would give to a new reader. And you guys know that I had to choose Tarot of Pagan Cats. I learned with the RWS and so I think I'm in a lot of company when I say that a good illustrated RWS based deck is the way to go when you're learning the meanings. That way you have visual cues. This one has some of the symbology um, of the RWS, but if you're looking for more esotericism as far as like the symbology of every kind of thing in the cards, then of course you can go with one of the more traditional and not um, an RWS, technically like clone. In some ways this is a clone and in other ways it's not, but I love it. There's just so much that it evokes. I'm never in question of like what the meanings are. They're so beautiful. I've always loved kitties. <laughs> of course she's not here when she's sitting next to me. We had like a fire alarm drill today and so she's a little on edge. She's a little bit clingy today, which she usually isn't at all. But yes, so this is the deck I'd give to a beginner. I think it's great. I think it reads really well. And it's a good way to memorize definitions. Okay, question number five, a deck you wanted to get along with, but it never clicked. That's the John Bauer for me. And just looking at it, like I really love the illustrations, but I feel such a disconnect from the illustrations and like their meanings. And I know that there are people who have made this into an oracle and I think that's a really cool idea. But even then, maybe like chalk it up to me having like a bad, I don't know, like an inadequate imagination because I can't, these are just like fairy tale stories that don't have I don't know they don't they don't inspire like meaning for me like I could make up a story about it but I can't translate that into like a parable for a reader does that make sense like for a querent and I really do love the art but then when it gets too much into like all the trolls and it's like too earthy it's like not really my vibe this is incredible, but I still really like it. So I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. I don't feel connected to it, but I don't want to give it up because I, I really value 
the artwork, you know? I know there's another question about like something you keep for the artwork, but you know, some of these questions can be interchangeable. I mean, some, you know, some of my, my answers, I guess, could be interchangeable. How is this the Knight of Coins? I don't know. I don't know. Like, and I feel silly because I feel like other people read this and they have such a great time with it. And I want to have a great time with it too. Like, I love it. But alas. Oh, look at that. The very next question is number six, a deck you keep for the art. So this is the true black. This is one of the first, I think it was like maybe a Kickstarter. No, maybe it wasn't. I might've gotten this on his website, but this is the original edition. I've considered getting rid of this several times because I don't really use it. But every time I consider getting rid of it, I look through it and I'm just so blown away that there's no way, there's just no way, especially the pips. They just, I don't know, they're mesmerizing. Like they're truly masterpieces like on their own. tell if I'm getting a good focus or not because I'm like up here. Hold please. Okay, hopefully that's better. Maybe I'll just keep them down here. As I was saying, the art in this is magnificent. Like, what? The, the use of light? I love the baby squid. Yeah, but it, it really doesn't inspire me to like work with it, honestly. It's not the type of deck that I want to do reading, readings with all the time. I have read other people with it, which is interesting. And it's not that I'll never read with it at all or never get to a place where I you know, want to go back to it. So I keep it. Just, and I've sold a lot of decks in my collection and this is just one that I knew I don't know, it's just too well done. Like this, this whole production is like incredible. So we keep, we keep. Question number seven, a deck you bought because everyone else did. I passed this up on the Kickstarter and then I, or did I get it on the Kickstarter? I'm saying that, but I'm like, I don't think this is the mass market version. Wait, it's gotta be. I don't know, let's see. Let's see if it says it in here. I thought originally that I had passed up this Kickstarter and then like I kept seeing it on people's channels and I'm like, it's so beautiful. Why didn't I get this? It doesn't have, well, Ulysses Press. I don't know if that is a mass market or an indie. Maybe I got it as an indie, like post Kickstarter, but then it became a mass market. Who knows? It's beautiful. It gave me FOMO. I've done readings with it, like that have been really good. And then I've done readings with it that were confusing, but I tend to want, okay. I tend to read others more than myself, but lately, maybe for the past year, I haven't been doing a lot of readings for other people. And then I go through things in life and I want to read myself. And I feel like part of my issue is that like, I'm very, I can be very disconnected with myself or just like intellectualize my feelings. And I don't realize I'm maybe dissociating and then when I am in my feelings, I just feel very confused and like lost. Like I know I feel sad or like whatever, but, or upset, but 
when you're really confused and like to the point where like you can't focus and like you don't know what to think um doing a reading doesn't really help because you can't make sense of like the the spread and the cards does that make sense does anyone else experience this let me know question eight a deck that's over your head or baffles you and i said the blood moon and it's not because i've tried that's your answer is that i haven't tried enough um the book wasn't out when i got this i think i i don't know if i got this on kickstarter or not it was no i think it was after the kickstarter but um I don't think the book was done yet. So I got a PDF file and whenever I get a PDF file, it goes downloaded into my computer and then I forget it exists. And I have done a reading or two trying to use the PDF file, but it's just hard to navigate and find what you're looking for. And this is a deck that all of the suits are renamed and it really has kind of its own flare it deviates from any you know system that we have come to rely on and i love that about it and i think it's really special i also wish the the deck itself was bigger because the art is so beautiful like i just wish i could see more of the detail i would like to get the book i think that would help but as of right now i've given up on trying to understand it the way that the artist meant it and that makes me not really use it but when you have a collection that's large you can't use all of your decks all the time so I don't feel a lot of guilt surrounding that because like I'm planning that you know this will be with me for a very long time if not forever so we'll get there we'll get there Question number nine, a deck that surprised you. Now, I spoke about this recently because this is a recent acquisition, but I never intended on getting any Alice in Wonderland tarots. And it's not that I didn't like Alice in Wonderland, but I never read the books. And whenever people would talk about any Alice deck on Tarot Tube, it was always from such a personal place. And it made me feel like, oh, this is kind of a fandom deck and it's not really something that's meant for me. And then I got the other Dame Darcy decks and I loved them. And I was like, okay, you know what? I really need to give Queen Alice a try. And then I got it and I was like, what the heck was I thinking? Like, this is so good. It's so tapping into like a facet of who I am and my aesthetics. It's so fun. It's so fantastical. I love the colors. I love it. I love it so, so much. And it really does remind me of being a kid. Probably because of like the art style. But yeah, it really did surprise me. I didn't... It's honestly like that's how the witchy cat felt too. But this just like... I felt like I knew the witchy cat was gonna be good because I had seen it on other people's channels. I had seen this on people's channels and I just didn't feel like I was connected. And boy, was I wrong because this is a great deck. Like a great deck for me, you know? <laughs> okay, number 10, a deck that doesn't really work for you, but you keep it because it's a collectible. And my deck for this prompt was the Tarot of the Silicon Dawn. And this is yet another example of, it doesn't work for me because I didn't put the work in. So I used to read with this. I think this was the second deck I ever bought. I wanna say after Tarot of the Unknown, which is really interesting. Like what a pick, right? I know. This deck, if you aren't familiar, has a great guidebook, by the way, is structured 
insanely. Okay, look at this is the major arcana. There are four fools. One, two, three, four. Yeah. There's this white card, there's this black card. There is a void card in every suit, and the void card in every suit is a different yeah, is a different um hello. I know this is gross, but like it came like that, okay? Um is a different court card. And then you have these extras, like you have nine, ten, oops, ninety-nine. And there's already a queen, but then there's like a dark queen. You know? Goes to 10, 99, queen, king, I forget what the C is. Oh, right. Knight something. I don't even remember. I should look it up. We can look it up together. And then on top of all those other extras, there's these extra cards, which mean things as well. And on top of that, there are suits that are switched. So like, I don't remember what it was. Like the wands are earth and the pentacles are fire or something. It's just a lot. And it's the kind of deck where like you really need to just study it and use it and live in it. And I did that when I first got it, but I didn't know a lot about tarot when I first got it. And now that I do, I need to like relearn this. I had to stop filming for a second and now we have major shadows, so sorry. I wanted to look at what those court cards are called in this deck. Okay, queen, king, chevalier, is that how you pronounce it? And princess. Okay, now I need to, oh man. I can't use my phone because I'm filming with my phone, but like, tell me how to pronounce that. It's not Chevalier. Please tell, Chevalier, I don't know. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so it's a really cool deck, but I need like six months with it or something, you know? Question 11, your favorite gilded deck. Now this is one that I chose more than one answer. My favorite gilded decks is a toss up between the Telesma and the Mike Wilcox. The Mike Wilcox is a major arcana plus oracle cards and the Telesma is a complete tarot deck based off, based off of the Thoth. We know, we love it. The Telesma. It's kind of a lot. It's like the rebel little sister of the Voyager tarot. It's just, I, don't, I can't even form words. Like, it's just so good. It's so interesting. I feel like I need to start pulling this like one card at a time, you know? Woo, anyway, okay. So that's the Telesma, it is gilded. I guess I could show you that. A lot of people don't like really shiny gilding like this. I don't really mind it, but it's not about the gilding. It's gilded and it's one of my favorites, you know? Same with this one. I chose it because it's gilded and it's so unique in its style. It's so deco and, and like psychedelic at the same time. It's like a mixture, you know, of like 20s and I don't know, 60s or 70s. A very, very cool deck. Okay, so those are my favorite gilded decks. My favorite decks that happen to be gilded. But I do have an answer for my favorite gilding. 
on a deck. And I will show you now. It is the Orion's Tarot. I believe this is the Kickstarter edition. And pow, 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 pow. I mean, look at that. It's just the prettiest darn gilding I've ever seen. And a beautiful deck. So I think this is the last of my multiple answer questions, okay? <laughs> The rest are one deck each. I don't know, maybe you like that, maybe you don't, but it is what it is. This deck like, really photographs so beautifully. I love the goldfish two of swords. Ugh, pretty. <laughs> Number 12, love it hate the card stock. And this is my most recent deck, actually. I just purchased it from a friend and it's the Womanhood Revisited Tarot. I just filmed a video on it. I don't know if it's up yet. If it's not, um, I just need to edit it. But as I was shuffling it in the video, I creased one of the cards. It was like a joke. Don't riffle shuffle this deck. Here, I'll set it down here. I have a full, like I do a full walkthrough of this, but um, this is an Etsy deck. It's independently published and it's kind of like the Belle Epoque era. Do I have some of these upside down? Yes, I'm sorry. It's like late Victorian, Edwardian, it's a really cool deck and really fun. And I actually did a reading too with it and like <laughs> kind of, it was terrible. Like it kind of like couldn't connect with it at all. So I think that like any true daughter, this is going to give me a hard time and you know, for good reason. Just because we all deserve it and we need to know how to deal with each individual, right? So yeah, this is the worst cardstock. It's really, it's like pretty stiff. It's less stiff this way, but yeah, it creases really easily. There was already a crease in one of these when I got it and then I creased another one by trying to shuffle it. So it will be hand over hand for this one only, which is my primary way of shuffling anyway. I don't know why I decided to just, you know, curse myself. Number 13, the deck that gives you the willies. And I'm sorry, it's the it's the hardy tarot for me. I had wanted this deck for a long time. I then kind of forgot about it for a minute. And then I got it from a friend as well. And this one, I love all of the cards that don't have people in them. And the cards that do have people in them creep me out. I guess this one's like not bad. But their faces, I'm so big on faces. And the style, like, mm. like what is that face? Nudity warning, you're on my channel. What's that, what is, what is this? I, it really doesn't bother me that they're all naked, but they're like mostly white and mostly like the same shape. We have different shades of white. I mean, I know this could be a non-white person, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I even like the nudity, but what is happening here? I don't know. And But then you get to like the pips and they're so cool. They're so good. Sorry I'm, if I'm like messing with the, focus there you go like so cool very you know I guess it's very thought this is one of my faves I love this oh I love this I wish the whole deck was like that and then people 
And I, it's not that I don't like people in my decks, I really do. I just want them to be drawn differently or better or something. So yeah, this like, it's not just that they're like, to me, that they're bad looking, it's that they're creepy. It really does give me the willies. But yeah, there are things about this deck that I like so much that I just can't get rid of it. So I just have to be stuck with these gross things. So good, so bad, so good, so good, so bad, so bad. <laughs> I have no words, just, just extremely good and bad. Barf, okay. I think that this is a really well done deck and I think that it is obvious that like this artist is really good and the way that they took the time and designed it is really really good it's just that the people are not my style of people maybe i was just raised on too many fashion magazines okay like i'm so so sorry but everything else about the deck is so cool oh you know what what if i found like really cool stickers and i put like the faces like what if i collaged on it would that be weird would that be i don't want to be disrespectful but i just love this deck or what if I just used it as an oracle and just like took out all of the cards that had people in it? Let me know. Let me know what you think I should do with this because I really do love it. Number 14, a deck for shadow work. This might be a little bit surprising for some people, but I find that this La Flora tarot can be really shadowy. No pun intended, because it's really shadowy right now. It's messing my, with my focus, but the fact that it's in grayscale and it's like kind of pointillism, like old school, um, what is that called? Like old school print, it's like blocking, print blocking, print. Somebody help, help me out. You know what I'm talking about? It just feels really shadowy. Like it's gonna tell you the truth, whether you wanna hear it or not. And it's gonna help you sort through your emotions and the mess and in like this really innocuous seeming way. But you know, plants can kill. <laughs> Plants can be sweet and pure in intention in the way that like humans use them. And then they can be the complete opposite, right? And their beauty can be very sensual. They can be very deceiving. Yeah, so I feel like this is a great deck to use for shadow work. Number 15, a deck you love in theory, but not in practice. I have the tarot cards and I missed this Kickstarter, but I was able to purchase it after the fact. I almost backed it on Kickstarter, but I don't think I had the money at the time. And I still love this and I still love the idea of it, but I don't know about using it. <laughs> I love it in theory, I, I really, really do. It's cool, like, I mean, it should be technically easy to use because it has these keywords and then it also has like a reversed keyword. But I don't know, like how often am I, am I compelled to pull out this deck? I can tell you not very. That being said, it is a great like historical or trivia type deck. If I were to do my own tarot cards deck, I would probably do different cars, not all of them different, maybe about half. Um, not because I don't agree with the meanings, but because there are different cars that like excite me, you know? Every suit is a different type of car, I think. I think it says in here. Oh, it doesn't say weird but i feel like there is a theme for each one like the fire cards are all like fire trucks or no that one's no, no that's the devil that's why 
who knows? Who knows? It's just super fun. And I really like the visuals of it too. It's like all black. It's like fun and sexy, I think. Reminds me of Barbie. <laughs> Don't ask. Don't ask. Number 16 is a deck you've never used to read someone else. And at this point in my life, it's the Shakespeare Tarot. I do have a video about this deck. I will put it in the description below. This has pretty much a textbook that goes with it. It's horizontal and it really needs like your time, you know? It really needs your focus and your study. And at this point, it's not really something that I feel I want to use for other people. It's something that I kind of want to do for myself and learn about the plays that are shown and the characters that are referred to in this deck and really like soak all, soak all of the art in. And then maybe when it's a good friend and I can call on it easily, then I'll use it for other people. It's so unique. I love the design. Like the art direction in this is amazing. It's one of those I saw on Etsy and I just like had to have it like immediately. Had to. Number 17, a deck you'd never use for yourself. And right now it's this one. The Lucky Nugget box is what this little fun box is called, but the deck is called the Kitten Nugget Tarot. Is this not the cutest thing? I, I also think I have a video about this. If I don't, it's in my, it's in one of my like at presents. That's probably what it is. It, I don't think I did a video dedicated to this deck. This is an indie deck, obviously. I got it as a Kickstarter. It has super fun backs. Like this is something that I'd wanna use to read for kids do a party, I don't know, play a game. I definitely could read this, you know, read myself with this. Uh oh, some of my cards are mixed up, but it's just not something that, maybe I should honestly, because it has like this levity <laughs> that I need, that I need in my life. It is so dang cute. This is one that when I got it, I thought, okay, well, I got the Kickstarter and I thought that like it was fun and a novelty and then maybe I'll just sell it. And I'm like, no way, Jose. It's just two adorbs. I mean, like you have it in your hands. It's, it's like, this feels right. <laughs> and it has really fun holographic edging. Of course I can't do it very well. You see it, you get the picture. There we go. So pretty. Um, Spirited Stardust has a really cute video on this too. If I can, I'll link it. Question 18, a deck you couldn't bring yourself to buy. I'll put a picture here, but I couldn't bring myself to buy the Autonomic Tarot. A, because it was expensive. It was just a, what do you call it? A majors only deck and now there's there was a kickstarter i think it might be over i don't remember i'll put the info below but the the kickstarter was for a full deck which was very exciting i mean it was a pip deck but that's fine but it was so expensive i want to say it was like a hundred dollars or maybe more and i was just like i can't justify this but artistically, I'm so interested. <laughs> oh well, say la vie. Maybe one day someone won't want it and they'll want to trade for something I have that I don't want. Number 19, your favorite pip deck. Now this really surprised me because, it's upside down, because I looked at a lot of my pip decks and this one, for its own special reasons really won out. 
this is obviously Disney's, I mean, it's licensed, but it's Disney's Alice in Wonderland tarot deck. And I think it was so beautifully designed, which we know is a must for me. And the illustration style is so charming and adorable. And it just feels magical. It feels like Disney and I'm a Disney girl, but it's hard because it's hard to be a fangirl when you have such a high taste level <laughs> because not everything that is licensed by Disney, I don't know, looks good to me. I have a very discerning taste. So this is such a thrill because it's a Disney thing that I can hold and love and use and it doesn't stop giving me that feeling, that magical feeling. Ugh, I love it so much. It's so sweet. Who doesn't like connecting to their, you know, childhood and feeling like a kid again? And on top of that, which this question isn't about, but it's a great shuffler. It's a great shuffler. Question number 20, a deck that slaps you with the truth and you guys knew I had to do the gentle thrills tarot because this deck is not playing. It's not playing at all. It doesn't care what you think. It doesn't care about your feelings. It doesn't want to spare you. It's very rude and it's very cool and funky while doing it. And that makes it even ruder because it's like, it's, it's like cooler than you and it's telling you you suck. It's pretty much like reading your entry in the burn book and then being like, okay, but where's the lie? You know, there's none. Don't be like, don't be fooled by the bright, happy colors. She's a punk and she's probably an Aries. Cause she's like, I'm just, I'm just telling my truth, baby. I'm just telling my truth. It's a great deck though. <laughs> Urban Outfitters, like, I think that's where I saw it originally, and then they stopped selling it, and I was like, oh no, what am I gonna do? Where is it? And then I don't even remember where I found it. Maybe it was on Amazon, but I was very, very happy to finally have it after, like, maybe a year of being like, I need this and not getting it, you know? But, you know, be careful what you wish for, even if it's the truth. And lastly, question number 21 the deck that got away. I feel like a lot of decks got away, but I wanted to reference a deck that I remember maybe the Kickstarter for, I don't remember if it was a Kickstarter, but like I remember when it came out, not getting it, not getting the factory seconds, not getting the expensive like secondhand sales of it by people who didn't want it. And then just feeling bummed. <laughs> and that's the majestic earth. And I'll put some pictures here. But I mean, I think that speaks for itself too. It's beautiful, people love it. And I think I would love it. I think it's really spectacular and singular and could pair well with a lot of things, you know? But I'll have it one day. This was super fun. I hope you enjoyed please give this video a like, comment your favorite deck, subscribe to me if you, if you must, if you will, turn notification bell on because um, I don't even get to see half of my favorite YouTuber, YouTubers videos. Like they just get lost in the shuffle and they don't show up on my subscription feed. I try to check it daily because I'm crazy. But yeah, I just want to thank you for being here. Thanks for being my friend. Thanks for being curious. And my mom's coming, I gotta go.